In this video, a validated post-packaging heat treatment will be discussed and demonstrated. This technology can be used by very small meat and poultry processors to reduce Listeria monocytogenous, or LM, in ready-to-eat products. In 2003, the United States Department of Agriculture Food Safety and Inspection Service required all ready-to-eat meat and poultry processing plants to identify interventions or alternatives that could be used to control Listeria monocytogenous contamination in ready-to-eat products. As part of this documentation, processors could use one of three acceptable alternatives to reduce the pathogen by greater than 90% or one log for the shelf life of the product. These include the use of an antimicrobial compound alone or in combination with post-packaging treatments or sanitation measures to prevent the introduction of the pathogen into ready-to-eat products. To meet an alternative one requirement, processing establishments may consider employing a combination of an approved antimicrobial treatment in or on the ready-to-eat product and a post-packaging treatment. This approach is the preferred alternative since it provides the most effective intervention. Antimicrobials should be generally recognized as safe by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Compounds also should be validated in the laboratory to reduce or eliminate the growth of Listeria monocytogenous on ready-to-eat meat and poultry products. Post-packaging treatments may include an additional heat step after packaging or high-pressure processing. USDA also accepts a growth limiting or suppressing treatment such as freezing for meeting the alternative one status. To meet alternative two requirements, facilities may employ either an approved antimicrobial treatment in or on the product or a post-lethality treatment to reduce or eliminate the pathogen from ready-to-eat products. Finally, to meet alternative three requirements, Establishments use sanitation to reduce or eliminate Listeria monocytogenous in the ready-to-eat environment and in ready-to-eat meat and poultry products. Most very small meat and poultry establishments that produce ready-to-eat products fall into the USDA Alternative 3 category. Under Alternative 3, Establishments are required to conduct environmental monitoring and test and hold ready-to-eat products for LM. In some cases, microbiological test results may take up to three or four days. For some very small establishments, storage or refrigeration costs may be incurred until the microbiological test results are known. To assist very small processors in meeting USDA Alternative 2 status, the Pennsylvania State University conducted laboratory experiments with a post-packaging heat treatment to reduce Listeria monocytogenous on ready-to-eat products. The post-packaging heat treatment will be described in 10 steps. Keep in mind that kielbasa, summer sausage, ring bologna, and snack sticks were evaluated in these studies. With the following information provided in this video, very small processors can decide if implementation of the post-packaging technology is right for them. Step 1. Before implementation of the post-packaging heat treatments, establishments should calibrate all thermometers to be used in this process. This includes a thermometer for the hot water bath and a thermometer for the ice bath. Okay. Step 2. Prior to the start of the production day, Turn on a hot water bath. Consider using a steam kettle or some other large piece of equipment with adequate heating of water. Larger pieces of equipment will accommodate several ready-to-eat product packages at once. Step 3. Before adding product for treatment, allow the hot water bath to reach a temperature of 210 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Depending on the equipment, it may take up to 30 minutes to ensure a stable temperature. Step 4. For rapid cooling of products after heat treatments, prepare a slushy ice bath. Fill up a pan, bucket, or tub with crushed ice and add cold water. Make sure the temperature is 32 degrees Fahrenheit or colder before adding heated product. If a lot of product is heated and cooled, 
Ice should be added regularly to maintain temperatures sufficient for cooling of all products. It is recommended that the temperatures of the ice bath be taken periodically to ensure proper temperatures for cooling. Step 5. Make sure that all packages to be heat treated are vacuum packaged with Cryovac CNP310 cook-in bags and not leaking at the seals. Only this type of packaging was used in the Penn State validation study. These cook-in bags can withstand temperatures up to 215 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember that sufficient pathogen reduction may not occur if other packaging materials or temperatures are used in this process. Step 6. Depending on the size of the hot water bath, add an appropriate number of packaged ready-to-eat meat products. If possible, use a large scoop or construct a wire basket to hold the products. The scoop or basket can be used to raise and lower product into and out of the center of the steam kettle. Employees performing this technology must be cautious to avoid steam burns. Step 7. Once the cold packaged products are added to the hot water bath, the temperature will fall below 210 degrees Fahrenheit. It is important that the hot water bath return to the target temperature of 210 degrees Fahrenheit before timing. Step 8. When the hot water bath returns to 210 degrees Fahrenheit and is stable, begin timing the post-packaging heat treatment. All products should be completely submerged in the hot water bath for a minimum of two minutes. Step 9. After two minutes, remove all packages from the hot water bath and immediately immerse them in a slushy ice water bath at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or lower for five minutes or longer to rapidly cool the product. This rapid cooling will ensure the product meets USDA FSIS stabilization guidelines. Step 10. Remember to dry off the outside of all packages before boxing. The product is now heat treated, cooled, and ready for further packaging and storage at 40 degrees Fahrenheit or less. There are four advantages to consider when implementing the post-packaging heat treatment described in this video. First, by implementing this post-packaging heat treatment, ready-to-eat products can be classified as alternative to. Penn State validation studies have demonstrated that these post-packaging heat treatments can reduce populations of Listeria monocytogenes greater than one log, or 90%. Second, the use of a post-packaging heat treatment demonstrates to consumers an increased level of protection for a company's reputation and brand name. Third, Penn State University research demonstrated that a post-packaging heat treatment may increase the shelf life and quality of these ready-to-eat products by also reducing other non-pathogenic microbial populations. And fourth, Consumer research also demonstrated that using post-packaging heat treatments on ring bologna, kielbasa, snack sticks, and summer sausage did not alter the flavor or texture of the treated products. In the event the post-packaging heat treatment described in this video is implemented, there are two disadvantages to consider. First, it is advised that product be evaluated for undesirable attributes or defects such as purge, split casing, and or fatting out. Establishment should consider holding product for up to two weeks under refrigeration as part of this evaluation. Second, the temperature of the water bath must be consistent for the given exposure time to generate a one log reduction of Listeria monocytogenes. Additional time may be needed for the water to reach 210 degrees Fahrenheit in between treatments. It is recommended that employees carefully monitor the water bath temperature throughout the process to ensure adequate heat treatment for all ready-to-eat products. Failure to follow these guidelines may result in an unacceptable or adulterated product. As described in this video, Plants can implement a post-packaging heat treatment for ready-to-eat products to control Listeria monocytogenes. However, it is important to remember that plants must use the appropriate packaging, follow
follow proper time and temperature regimens for heat treatments, cool products rapidly, and store treated products under refrigerated conditions. Additional information about the post-packaging heat treatment described in this video is available in an accompanying booklet.